Hello, hello, and welcome to our session for quick questions to cure your career confusion. I am Stephanie Kunar, and I'm here with my business partner, uh, Luann McCurdy. So welcome to our session. A um, bit about me is uh, I am a marketing professional. I'm an academic career coach and a workshop facilitator. I uh, have taught over 4,000 students, and um, I'm the author of the Amazon best-selling newly released book. We're very excited, Backpack to Briefcase, A Student's Guide to a Meaningful Career Journey. And both Luann and I are Gallup Certified Strengths Coaches and um, co-founder with Luann for Perspectives Consulting. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. And uh, we're so grateful to be here with you and share some of this really good information. I've had careers, uh, career in STEM as an engineer, as an IT programmer, as a data analyst and team leader. I also have a Bachelor of Education. I've lived and worked in the US, in Canada, in Singapore, France, and India. And part of my volunteer work is as chair of the Status of Women and Human Rights at the University Women's Club of Vancouver. So we're really interested in you. We have a poll for you to, you to tell us basically, if you're a student that is identifying the right high school courses for next year, applying to post-secondary programs and schools, are you applying maybe to graduate post-secondary programs in schools, or is it a, is a whole other category? So there's a poll there for you to, um, to participate in, yeah. Thanks folks, some, some votes are rolling in. We're at about one third. We'll keep it open for another minute to uh, give folks a chance to vote. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We just wanna get a sense of who's in the, in the room, the virtual room. Yeah, you're helping us. We can tailor our messages. Great, we're just passing two thirds. Folks keep weighing in and, and we'll close it in just another moment. Thank you. All right, folks, we'll close it off now. We've got about 80% participation. And uh, the results are a staggering majority applying to post-secondary programs in schools, uh, just shy of 80%. Um, we've got almost 10% of our crowd uh, is trying to ID the right high school courses. Um, uh, an equal number are in the other category and a small percentage are applying to post-grad. Right. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, very, you much. very much. Great. And one more question. How are you feeling about this? Are you feeling clear on your career direction? Are you still considering options? Or are maybe you in the not sure for now category? I'm not sure of my career direction. Hey folks, and the poll is on the screen. Uh, please weigh in. We'll keep it open for a minute. This is great. This is or, no, sorry. I was going to say this is a great event, right? To kind of keep uh, finding out more information. It's uh, been a great conference to be part of. Thank you, Logan. Oh, my pleasure. I've enjoyed quite a few pretty uh, interesting and compelling uh, presentations today and yesterday. So I'm glad to have been part of it myself. Uh, poll wise, we're closing in on three quarters uh, participation. So folks uh, weigh in now and we'll close it off in just another moment.
Okay, folks, and final results a bit more mixed this time. Uh, clear on my career direction, only 8%, uh, pretty small, pretty small number. Uh, still considering options out in front with 56%. Uh, and at 36%, just about one third, uh, folks who are not sure of their career direction. So it sounds like uh, a lot is still up in the air for our audience today. Okay, that's great. It's a perfect time to be thinking about who you are and what do you want to, you know, where do you want to take the next steps? So it can be confusing for some students, not everybody, but there are some students who do feel lost and confused and not sure of the next steps. Sometimes they feel like it's like they're suffering almost for, from uh, career confusion or maybe decision paralysis. Like, what do I do? Where do I look? It's that feeling of so many options. What do I do next? And, the, and I just wanna you know, put some reassurance out there. Um, they're not alone. It's just part of growing up. So it is hard to know, you know, what's going to be a good fit, right, with all of these options out there. And um, the thing is, many people enroll in, in an educational program without really knowing if the program is going to lead to a career that would be a good fit for them, right? And I think that's where a lot of the pressure comes from, right? Like you feel like you have to make a decision. Well, one of the keys is, is that you know, students maybe haven't taken um, the time to really understand themselves, right, or know the job market. And, you know, unfortunately, those students can spend unnecessary time and dollars trying to find their way. You know, you can enroll in a program and you can use that as good information and find out is it good or not good. But you know what, this can take time. And it, and it may work out in the long run, that's fine. But did you know that there are actually proven steps that can kind of guide you earlier on to career clarity? So with over 20 years experience, you know, I've taught thousands of students and I really have seen what has worked and not worked with students as they transition to the workforce. I've seen young people that have taken proven steps and have begun their meaningful career journey and they're very, um, you know, self-sufficient and motivated and in a good place. So what are these proven steps and what questions did they ask themselves? Well, we've written this book, Backpack to Briefcase, A Student's Guide to a Meaningful Career Journey to help address that. The book itself is based um, in three phases or chunked out. It's got discover phase, build and launch. And the discover phase is kind of where we're gonna to focus today. It's key to help, um, to help you understand yourself so that you can use your strengths um, to make a difference and also have financial security. So we begin this discover phase in the book by helping students understand themselves using the Ikigai framework. Not sure if you have heard of this. Um, what is the Ikigai framework? I, I see a, a comment in there about having some ideas of my career path, but my parents maybe aren't in favor. And you know what, this is, this presentation will help you because you will be able to maybe articulate why these other these other ideas that you have make sense for you, right? So the Ikigai framework, it's a Japanese word that roughly means your reason for being, right? And it's pronounced Ikigai. And one's Ikigai is found where the four circles intersect. So you see here, circle one is what you love. Circle two, what you are good at. Circle three, what the world needs. And circle four, what you can be paid for. And it's asking and answering these four questions that is going to help provide some clarity. And you know what? Some great conversation with your parents. We just earlier did an hour ago, a parent's workshop on the four questions you can ask your kids. And it's based on these four questions because we know that your parents are involved in this decision and you want to have that dialogue on really what you're all about and what as well. If you can articulate it, that might help the conversation. So asking these questions and answering them will help you get clear. It'll help you understand what you love more clearly and why. Gain a sense of ownership over what you're good at, your strengths. Give you also a sense of how you can make the world a better place. We're going to talk about that. 
and determine what jobs and skills will be in demand in the future. So in our coaching practice, we have seen young people, just like yourselves, develop clarity through this discover phase. So tips for thinking about these questions. Um, you know, maybe you want to set some time aside to reflect, grab a nice journal, or um, you can do it on the computer if you want, and stay curious and enjoy this discovery of these aha moments that might show up. Over to you, Lou. Great, thanks. So we'll take a look through all four circles, and we're going to start with this one, what you love. So there are some questions to ask to help reflect on what you love. And the clues to what you love can be found in, you know, your hobbies, your interests, your clubs, the sports you're in, favorite school subjects, anything where you find yourself drawn to. Like the concept is uh, something that really kind of energizes you. So consider, like, what are some of your favorite hobbies? And we'd love it if you uh, share your hobbies in, in the chat. It's always fun to see what people are doing because there's such a range, um, such a range of opportunities to do different things. Yeah, and people are attracted to, to very different things too. And that's what we find when we do our coaching. It's so individual, isn't it? Yeah, it sh yeah, sh absolutely. And then the next piece of this is um, what do you love about it? Like what energizes you about your hobby? Is there some hobbies showing up in the chat? I can't see Logan. Uh, yeah, we just got uh, one uh, guitar and sketching. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else want to contribute? Uh, and we also got uh, from Maya creating artwork and from anonymous uh, portrait painting exclamation point. Uh, we've got dance, knitting, crocheting, essay writing, wow. playing games, drawing and writing crazy ideas. Doing creative. Oh, this, is fa this is fabulous. Yes. Well, so, <laughs> uh, writing crazy ideas. I'm in, I'm intrigued. So, <laughs> so the goal of all of this is to uncover what energizes you when you're participating in these hobbies. So like, for example, we have this image of a young woman in a garden here. So, you know, what is it about gardening or this situation that energizes her? Is it the science of it? You know, the act of planting a seed and see a seedling and a plant and a flower? Is it perhaps um, like the color? Is it the community of her gardening community? Or maybe it's the impact of what gardening has on people, the psychology of gardening? Or maybe it's like, man, you can like make a lot of money by growing flowers and selling them. So it, it's so individual. Uh, and But the point is to be in that reflective space and have um, be thinking about those moments of being energized. So other clues to what you love, like who do you follow on YouTube or on Instagram or TikTok? That is, is there's such a range of what, people's, um, what people follow. And when you go to a bookstore, what's your favorite section to visit? And I encourage you, if you don't have the answer to that right away, try it sometime, take an hour on the weekend or when you have time, Find a nice bookstore that you really like. Get yourself in that kind of exploration mindset and walk around and see what you're attracted to and maybe think that next level down. Like, why, why am I attracted to this? Why am I attracted to travel? Why am I attracted to fantasy or sci-fi? And, um, you know, you'll be, you'll be really amazed how um, the insights you can get. Mm -hmm. There's lots of dots to connect as you go through this exercise, aren't there? Like, um, you know, somebody that we know who is uh, is very interested in autobiographies, right? And it turns out one of his strengths was individualization. He really likes to understand people individually. And I was like, isn't that funny that he just goes to the biography section? So, all right. So the next circle is what you are good at. So everyone has unique strengths and talents, right? And these are things that actually we're, we're naturally good at. 
And um, something that comes easy to you may not be easy for somebody else, right? And sometimes we see a talent in someone else. We're like, wow, that's amazing. I really admire that talent you have. But one way to uncover this talent for yourself is to reflect actually on a past accomplishment, an accomplishment or something you felt really happy about the way it went. Sometime when you felt successful, you felt you were engaged, you were inspired, you were again in the flow. And you, you also have energy around this. You keep us saying, you'll probably hear us saying energized because those are real clues of when you're in the flow. So the kind of questions you can think about are, can you actually think of a situation when you did something you were really proud of? You know, this, this takes some time to think about sometimes, right? It could be at school, it could be at work, it could be while volunteering. And what was it about that situation that energized you? So we've had coaching clients and one young woman said to me, she gets a real great feeling uh, when she helps. Um, she's a, a youth you know, leader for pedal heads. Pedal heads is how to ride bikes for little kids, how to like you know, ride bikes and let go of the training wheels. And she says, when I let go of that bike and the kid takes off, I just feel so great. And she also had that same feeling when she was a buddy, and this was in high school, helping a child with um, neurodiversity kind of um, learn new things. And she said, when it clicks, man, I get a real jolt. So you can see that there's actually a little bit of a pattern there. And it's looking at these kind of situations where you will kind of start to recognize things and see that maybe you're using the same skills in both situations. Um, are there any patterns there? So, you know, and it can be quite dis different things. You know, we've, we have, um, we have write about it in the book, somebody who had um, two different things. One was um, creating an event, a fashion show event. The other one was running a 10K. Well, when we looked at it, it was actually different skills in each that she was pulling out that were the same. And it was planning, organizing, scheduling. So whether it was for the event or whether it was for her training. So you could see that those are some things that she's naturally good at and enjoys. Another way that we actually identify um, talents and strengths is through assessments in our program. And we recommend in the book it can be Myers-Briggs assessment, um, learning about if you're extrovert or introvert. Um, but what we use is the Clifton Strengths Assessment. Luann and I are both Gallup certified uh, strengths coaches. This assessment identifies your top five strengths and identifies and articulates for you what the way you naturally think, feel, and behave. And sometimes we've had students say, wow, I never knew that was a talent, right? Um, you know, always getting things in on time. That's actually responsibility. They call that as a talent or a strength. So the report helps you articulate it. And we use that in our, in our coaching practice. Great. So circle three is what the world needs. And, you know, to have a meaningful career and to have a legacy that has an impact on the planet is going to give you um, a lot of happiness and satisfaction in your life in general. So our, our idea or our <laughs> belief is that the world needs you, the world needs your talents and dream big, dream big. You can make a difference in this world. I'm convinced of it. So just consider, you know, what are some of the challenges that we're facing in the world that really resonate with you? Or what really bothers you that no one seems to be working on. Maybe there's a, a home for you somewhere in making a difference to these challenges. Maybe we can ask, I don't know if you're going to ask after this question or not, Lou, about the chat. Yeah, that would be great. So while, you know, we're looking at this slide and next, please enter into the chat some of the challenges that you're, that you resonate, that you'd be interested in working on. You know, if you had the power to make a significant change in the lives of people or the planet, what would you change? And it's it's really fascinating. Like, it's intriguing how um, thoughtful the um, young people are about these challenges. I mean, we 
we did, um, Stephanie was saying, reminding me the, when we spoke with the parents that we did something with the big sisters and we, like everyone was coming up with brilliant um, challenges to work on and they were really passionate about them. So. Mm -hmm. And these are, these are challenges that you see out in the world. And, and like we've said here, like nobody seems to be working on this. Like, you know, you are the change that you want to see in the world. Right. So it's like, you know what, well, maybe I need to work on that. Right. <laughs> you know, Got a few results uh, so far coming in. Uh, things like homelessness, climate change is a big one, uh, racism, women's access to education, lots of great topics. Wow, wonderful. We need you. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. So you can apply your talents to the issues that concern you. And in our coaching practice, um, we share the UN SDGs or UN Sustainable Development Goals to provide inspiration and further in discussion. I, I know a lot of students have seen, seen this before. Sometimes um, parents have not. Uh, so we like to use this. It's a great way of putting these groups of problems together and then kind of working from there and looking at which industries or which careers are addressing those issues. Mm -hmm. There's many organizations that are challenge taking on these challenges, and there's so many resources um, that United Nations provides on each of these. So this is just just the name of them, right? But there's many many layers to what these are on the you know the challenges and how the pandemics affected all of the implementation or meeting of the goals here. So here we've got some more, yeah, reconciliation with indigenous people, homelessness, climate change, women's access to jobs and education, access to healthcare, free mental health resources. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, guys are, you guys are on it. So circle four is what you can be paid for. So just imagine, right? You could do what you love, what you're naturally really good at, um, you could be working on or, you know, with a company or organization that's working on what the world needs that you are passionate about or aligns with your values, and you actually could get paid for it, right? So the key to that is you, we all want you to be financially independent, and we want you to want to be financially independent. And one key is to kind of make sure you're positioned well for the future labor market, right? So that requires kind of knowing the jobs and the skills that will be in demand in a few years from now, right? That are of interest to you, right? Um, you want to be well positioned in the industries and the trends that are kind of like showing up. So there are ways to, to figure this out. So we'd like to ask you, are there any trends or industries that you see that you're interested in? What kind of industries or excite you or you know is it artificial intelligence is it robotics is it um you know we know logan has vegan leather shoes you know is it kombucha is it new food trends what kind of things interest you and i'm what i'm talking about here are trends that are growing right let me take give you a second if there's any in there And for the earlier um, comment, you know, sometimes you guys are you got your fingers on the, on the, the pulse of what's happening. And sometimes this is kind of a conversation with your parent. You say, you know what, this is really growing this area. Right. So tech, uh, Vlad has mentioned. Right. Well, you know, what areas and, and are there certain companies that are working in that industry that you are following or that you are interested in? You know, biotech is mentioned as well, medical technology. So what companies are working in that industry and what jobs are in that field? And then what education is required? So do you see how you're doing a little bit of like looking ahead, seeing what jobs are there, quantum computing, is, uh, and then kind of working back to seeing what education is required? That's going to help you make sure that you're on, you know, enrolled in the right program. So where do you get this type of information? Well, we do have our friend Google. Um, but we'd like to share with you, there's three key ways we recommend. So first of all, it's doing online research, which I'm sure a lot of you are skilled at. Um, conducting informational interviews, we'll explain that. And then Luann will talk about connecting to industry associations. The whole idea is having 
uh, a career exploration mindset. You're trying to find the best fit for you, right? What is the best fit for me? You know, you're not, you're not just trying to get a job, right? You're trying to get the best fit for you. So there's lots of uh, research out there in BC here where we are in Vancouver, there's WorkBC is a government provincial website that has lots of data on high demand occupations. You can do uh, on this website, you can look at a whole bunch of different videos on different jobs, the day in the life of a job of a park ranger or an event planner or an architect. And they also have data. So lots of information like what is the average salary? Um, what's the forecasted employment growth rate going to be? Is this job category growing? And you want to look because some are declining. And what are the job openings look like? Is there going to be a lot of retirements? Is there going to be a lot of openings? Mm -hmm. The next one is talking about here is, is informational interviews. So some of you might have done informational interviews. But before I go, let's see what some of these categories are showing up here. Sustainable fashion, music and entertainment. Games are taking the forefront in providing entertainment. Great point. Yeah. Esports growing. I like to go into literature and English, but I'm worried about how much money I can make with jobs related to, to writing in English. So yeah, we you you it's a good thing to think about that, right? So maybe that you got to figure out where are those jobs for those grads of English and literature. You know, maybe it is teaching. Um, in that's a that's a career that's well paid, but is that match with your skill set? So if you're not sure, then you maybe want to do some informational interviews. Speak to someone already working in that field. So for the anonymous literature in English, maybe you do want to speak to somebody that teaches high school English or master's English, you know, at a college and, and find out what that job's like. That's one career path that you may like or you may rule out and say, well, no, actually, that's not what I want to do. And we've got some sample questions here. Um, you know, how did you become interested in the career? What advice would you give someone interested in this career? What is a typical day like? And then this is a good tip. Is there someone else you would suggest I speak to? Try and get another name, right? Somebody like, yeah, actually, I think you should speak to this person. So you're always kind of learning and building up your own almost ecosystem. And in our book, it's full of activities um, that you write out right in the book. And we also have a workbook if people want that they can scan and download. But this is kind of like making an action plan, right? So you put the careers down the side and you can, might have to ask your family, your friends, your friend's family, your friend's parents, or they might know somebody who's in those careers. And you can put the contact information there and reach out to them and kind of see if you can get a, a coffee or a Zoom meeting and, and just find out a little bit more information. Great. So another way to explore what you can get paid for is to connect to clubs and industry associations. So there are clubs and activity clubs if you're in high school or post-secondary. It could be like robotics or it could be the newspaper. I know when I was in engineering, I also wrote for the school newspaper. So it gave me a chance to, to write as well as um, do a lot of numbers. And there are industry associations for every sector and that they're all kinds of levels. They're at international level, national, provincial, citywide associations, and even community, even neighborhood associations. That um, is a great way for you to be involved with other people that um, have, are kind of like-minded or are interested in the same topics. So it could be through a board of trade, a chamber of commerce, a marketing association, accounting, professional designations have a, associations. And often um, student membership is often a, an option. Um, sometimes, uh, well, quite often you have to pay to be part of the association, but they'll have a discounted rate for student. And even if not, they'll have free events or free webinars that you can get involved in. So how do you find these industry associations? Well, we have just the place. It's this Canadian professional organizations website the the link is there and even though it's not a very pretty website it has a very 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 long list 
of associations that if you went through that list, you might even be triggered to think, oh, I, I never even thought of that, that that was a particular career or that was something I could learn more about. Then it's a matter of getting, um, first step would be to get on their website and to see, uh, see what's available for you to learn. So I've chosen an example here. This is the BC Provincial um, Organization of the American Marketing Association. And they have a nice attractive website. You can see they have a couple of upcoming events. There's option for membership. Uh, you can volunteer. Uh, a lot of these organizations need volunteers. And some of them even have collegiate chapters and almost all have webinars or some kind of events. And I, I wanna point this out, especially if you're from a small town or a small place and you don't feel like you have like that professional support around you um, because we're all more Zoom friendly these days. It's, it's amazing what you can do and find out, um, get involved um, via Zoom or attend an event via Zoom or even volunteer via Zoom. It's all, it's, the world is kind of flattened in, in lots of ways. And, you know, part of this is accountability. So it's great to say, yeah, I'm going to look at that. But you have to have um, an honest conversation with yourself. Is this a habit? Is this something I'm going to do? Is this a something I'm, I'm going to connect with? And that is, you know, part of our course and part of our coaching is we kind of hold your feet to, your, to the fire a little bit and have you write it down, write down the name of the association and whether you attend an event or... Can you volunteer? And even just that far column on the right, it can be so valuable. Just sign up for the newsletter and you'll have dripped into your inbox periodically information from that, that um, association and just take a look. Is this something I'm interested in? Um, does it scare me? Are there people I want to meet? Is there an event? It can be really interesting. Yeah, they have a lot of even job boards, right? And um, jobs that come in those newsletters, so you can see salaries. It's all sorts of, you know, information that you get access to there. So these are the four questions, you know, that, that we begin with, um, that we suggest to cure, cure confusion or provide some clarity. It's reflecting on these that um, will help you feel more confident about the journey that you're going to be embarking on or even helping you get out of that paralysis analysis paralysis and, and kind of make a, make a decision. And it, it, it's not that it can't change, right? The, this whole idea is that this is iterative. This is going to be added to modified as you learn and grow and you, you learn more about yourself, but this icky guy can help you kind of guide you, you know, you check in with it to help select high school courses when you're applying to post-secondary programs and grad programs, and even if you get a few offers to accept deciding on that. And we'd love to hear, you know, any comments on that. How does that feel in terms of the, this as a guide? Would, do you feel that that would be provide you with some kind of help? I'm kind of curious what you're thinking these, on these questions. I know we're going to have Q&A in a minute. see Maya saying to anonymous don't focus on the money right but you want to know what makes you happy it's true and what what ticks a lot of those boxes I feel that what I'm good at won't pay well I, I think it's reasonable to understand that and that's really why that key area of what you can get paid for is important because there's people that might have to have two things. Maybe you have a side hustle, which fills your boots, right? With all sorts of good feels. And you do have a job that you're good at, that pays a salary, that allows you to have benefits and the kind of life that you want. But maybe it's your job, your whole job doesn't fulfill that. So this is the ho a holistic look at these things too, right? Mm hmm. I believe it clears up some confusion. I think it shows the aspects you should think about when you want to choose your first career. Yeah, it's it's, it's introducing some new elements, like what the world needs. I, I, I think that one is a very intriguing one, as Lewis said. It's very interesting to 
kind of pull that out and see, wow, I could be, you could be an accountant in a sustainable alternate, you know, alternative energy company, right? You could still be doing a job, but being in a company that is moving things ahead or the values that you care about. How much should I focus on entry level experience work before trying to get my career? Well, the entry level experience can come through volunteering uh, as well and leadership of clubs. So I think it's important and I think you should be building it while you are at school in your program. So Clear, career clarity is kind of what we're working on, you know, uh, helping students get a little bit clearer. We've shared some proven steps and we've captured them all in our, in our book, also our workbook and our four week course. If you like our approach, you know, consider, hey, purchasing the book, it's $24.99 um, Canadian. And um, the idea of the course is, is that it might help you prior to having to make these decisions that you're doing see. So if you do want more mentorship or guidance, um, we've mentioned our online program. It starts every month. Um, it has engaging activities. It includes the strengths assessment. So you will find out your top five strengths. And uh, we use that as part of the inputs for doing um, other activities. You would get four one-on-one, -on -one, one hour coaching sessions, right? And um, it's designed to help you get that career clarity and support you in your decision making. You know, when, you know, I've got young adults and so does Luann, you know, when they need a driver's ed lessons, I didn't, I, I, I didn't do it all. Right? I did teach them a little bit, but we hired somebody when it was physics tutoring. Uh, it wasn't me. We hired a tutor. Right. So that might be a way to look at it as well. Oh, Stephanie, I just want to say we hired the English tutor. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's conference promotion here. So you can share that um, with your parents as well or, or think about it for yourself. It's a $300 discount. This is a relatively new program, but it's based on a lot of our coaching practice. So we're very excited about it. Um, we've had students run through the program and, it's, and we've had some good successes. So there's a promo code there, gift bundle. And then there's a uh, you know, we'd love to even chat about this further and, and find out where you're at. Maybe it's maybe it's not the book. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's an hour coaching or or two or just a sounding board. So we have Calendly set up. So you can make appointments. We're offering free 30 minute sessions um, for you to chat with us. And then you're also free to connect with us on LinkedIn um, or email us. So we have some time for Q&A. Uh, Logan, is there some questions that you would like to fo have focus on or see a pattern at all? Yeah, absolutely. We do have quite a few questions and uh, we'll jump to the top and kind of go through them. Uh, okay. You mentioned the entry level. Here's an interesting one. Is there an ikigai for everyone? Is, is everyone likely to find the right thing with enough sort of time and, and patience? I think so. I, I think so. I, I think it's, it's ongoing and it's never, you know, it, it evolves. Um, in the book, and, and recently I wrote an article for mid-career professionals because I was like, well, what if I never heard about Ikigai when I was in high school? Is it too late for me? And it's, it's never too late because, you know what, we're always going through these stages of rediscover, rebuild, and relaunch. And so that's kind of key to, to be thinking about it, that we're always rediscovering about ourselves. We're always learning. We're always building new skills and we're always maybe launching again. What's that? Do you consider entrepreneurship in any area in your book or coaching practice? Go ahead, Lou. Sure, sure. Yeah, so um, I'll let Stephanie talk about the book because the book is full of examples and success stories. Um, so, you know, this little piece on entrepreneurship really comes out during the coaching. 
And when you look at a person's strengths and you kind of connect the dots, right? So if you're hearing a lot, you know, some self-assurance and some like that loving, like getting the deal and having an idea and just really wanting to maybe not be a boss, but be your own boss, then it can lead to entrepreneurship. So we draw that out um, as, as we coach, but we coach kind of based on the book. So you'll find in the book ideas and examples of how to think about it. But entrepreneurship is, is a, I mean, it's a legit career. It's, it's just part of the fabric of um, being alive in, you know, this planet at this time. It's, it's uh, not everything has to be a profession or have like a certain kind of job title. Mm -hmm. Well, entrepreneurship, as Lou was saying, it would come out of your skill sets, right? It would come out of the environment that you thrive in, right? Maybe you need you need and want to make the decisions. You have self-assurance and you're confident. You know, maybe your family structure has been a family of entrepreneurs or maybe not, but you feel the, the, the desire to do it. So what we do is we really work with um, – young people and mid-career people to, to kind of think about what works for them and then, you know, support as they go and find out more information. And that's probably what we would say is like, oh, well, sign up for Small Business BC. Let's get, you know, think about joining them and going to some workshops and finding out what it is like to be an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs speak to some entrepreneurs, right? It's the same kind of path, you know, so it would be the same kind of um, things, but it would be around exploring and understanding entrepreneurship in a better way. Beautiful. Thanks so much. Uh, we just have a few more minutes left of the fair. So if anyone has last minute questions, uh, now's your chance. Uh, we've got one from Vlad. Uh, let's say someone has many things they like and are good at many subjects, math, language, visual arts, etc. Not to brag, of course. Uh, <laughs> how, can they find, how can such a student find a career that suits and incorporates uh, the whole person, right? Well, I think that's almost um, a little bit of our circle one, right? What you're, what you love, and also circle two, what you're good at. So, I, I would say, is there some things um, that you want to address? Some challenges in the world? Is there a way to apply your talents um, in an organization or with a company that's values align with yours? So we have, we haven't shown you everything, but we have other exercises around identifying your values, right? We have a, an activity with challenge cards that really kind of gets to the meaning piece. The meaning piece, I've got so many books back here on happiness, and happiness is fleeting, whereas meaning is um, much more long-lasting and gives you more satisfaction. So there would be that, and I would suggest um, even looking at the labor market. You want to go in a, in a segment that's growing, I think. You know, like, why not? I mean, that's where all the excitement is sometimes, right? That's where a lot of the investment is. That's where a lot of the growth is and the hiring in those companies. So I would layer that in there, Vlad, as well. And um, it kind of start kind of honing in on something, you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. So that's, did you hear Stephanie speak about circle one, circle two, then she pulled in circle three and then let's pull in circle four. Like what can you get paid for that needs all of these things combined? Right. I'm sure there's something out there that, and so it's just a matter of um, having that career mindset with that kind of narrowed down piece of who you really are. It's very fun. We find it very rewarding, you know, and everybody is so unique and different. And, and, and what we enjoy is the aha moments where somebody goes, oh, my gosh, you know, oh, my God. And they're excited and they want to move to the next step. So we've seen we've seen that happen. And, and I, I think that's what that's mm -hmm. keeps us going. But we want to thank everybody. I think it must be close, eh, Logan, to do we we're, we're the last show of the day, aren't we? <laughs> and the seconds are ticking down. Any parting words from you folks before we wrap up for the day? Um, I think, you know what, you guys, it's, it's, it's an exploration. Have that kind of mindset that you're, you're trying to find the best opportunity at this point, you know, knowing what you know, 
and um, just be open to to learning and be curious and, and finding out about yourself and, and what your fit would be and and know you can change. You know what I mean? None of this is like unchangeable. Somebody met, had a question, how much change in my career? I, I think, you know, it, it's based on where you're feeling. If you're feeling satisfied and in a good position and you don't want to change. But if you're not, then keep looking for that fit. That's what I say. What would you like to say? Anything else? Lou? Uh, I would, I was just looking at Asia. She's saying, if we know what career area we want to pursue, what kind of opportunities will we have in university to explore our options? Well, um, I'm not going to answer that uh, on behalf of the university. That's something you'll have to figure out, but it's a really, really good point because there are some programs that don't allow very much fluidity in your choices and there are others that allow lots of fluidity. So if you feel like you're in one in category B, then that'll impact which program uh, that you that you attend. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, Logan did ask, you know, final, you know, final parting thoughts, and it just, you know, what you do today will impact your future. So you know, do some of these steps, ask some of these questions, and what you discover will probably have like a positive impact on your future. Mm -hmm. And I would just add for the universities, uh, many, many of them have um, similar, you know, um, passion about helping students, career advisors, the co-op center, the career advice center, um, work integrated learning. So I would seek out all of those um, opportunities at your university because I'm sure they would have a co-op or career center and, and just say, you know, I'm, I'm wanting some help in this area. There's great resources out there. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thanks mm -hmm. so much, uh, to you both for your insight and expertise today. Really uh, enjoyed the presentation. I appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.